The recommended dietary allowances were enacted in 1968 to ensure that 97.5% of the population was not deficient in certain vitamins, minerals, and elements. To determine that, they took an amount where 50% of the population was not deficient and then they doubled that amount, figuring, well, now 97.5% are good. They then updated the RDAs in 2016. So why are we taking advice from a government body that updates their RDAs every 50 years? And what really drives me crazy is people say, oh, I hit my RDAs today. You have these chronometer warriors, and a chronometer being a, a dietary website where people can track their nutrients saying, oh, I hit my RDA of this today. I hit my RDA of that today. When these people are literally saying like, I didn't die today, or I'm such a great driver because I didn't get in a car accident today. These are literally to prevent a deficiency. These have nothing to do with optimal nutrition, and there are also many flaws with the RDAs. The biggest flaw being calcium RDA being way too high, magnesium bioavailability not being considered, as well as the fat soluble vitamin conversions and how much more nutrients we are actually able to get in a natural indigenous diet in comparison to what we're eating now. So just to touch on the calcium RDA, the reason the calcium RDA is so high at 1100 milligrams, which is completely unachievable from any natural food. The reason it's so high is because of osteoporosis and they think, oh well, calcium is for strong healthy bones, but no. You need vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 to deliver the calcium to the bones. So the calcium RDA being so high is attempting to mask problems with D3 and K2. Ironically, the D3 RDA is 400 IU or 10 micrograms, which is about, I don't know, 1% of what you can get in nature in one day by being in the sun and there is no established value for vitamin k2 so very apparent problems relating to k2 and d3 deficiencies that we're trying to make up for a very high calcium rda this is the biggest problem and i'm going to link you guys two studies that show that calcium supplementation is actually associated with increased cardiovascular risk particularly heart attacks and strokes in addition to that the bioavailability of calcium in foods isn't that high. It's bound to oxalates. In spinach, the calcium availability is very low. I'll show you guys studies on that too. Same thing with magnesium, but the problem isn't getting too much magnesium. The problem really is that we don't get enough. Uh, besides soils being depleted, the magnesium RDA is 350 milligrams. But if the bioavailability of magnesium is anywhere from 20 to 50 percent, that means we're only getting, I don't know, 75 milligrams of magnesium to what? 150. So one pound of meat has 84 milligrams of magnesium and that magnesium is in the most bioavailable form. So if you're eating two or three pounds of meat on a carnivore diet, it's safe to say you're getting more magnesium than pretty much anyone on a standard American diet, even if they're hitting their RDA through plant foods, which is very unlikely. So bioavailability not being considered in the context of oxalates in these two vitamins specifically, and then, I mean, we could go into phytic acid with iron and zinc and all of those things, but these, to me, were two glaringly obvious ones. The next problem would be the carotene and K1 conversion to retinoic acid and K2. Guys, I can't even convince people on a carnivore diet or just people in general that nutrients are important. Uh, if you want to watch that video, I literally have one, Why Nutrients Are Important. I'll link it in the description. In addition to that video, I will link a video where like, I taste all the organ meats and, and also uh, one where I go in depth on vitamin D3 to kind of explain things further. But that's not going to be the focus of this video because it's not really brought up in the context of RDAs and carnivore discussion. Fat soluble vitamin content being too low, this kind of ties in with what I just said that, you know, I can't really convince people, but it's very apparent in nature and certain foods on the carnivore diet that we can get thousands of times the amount of vitamins that the RDAs are telling us we need. Cherry picking, as in people tend to choose the RDAs when they fit their needs and ignore them when they don't. Like carnivores will say, oh, well, we don't need vitamin C because it's for carbohydrate metabolism and we don't consume carbohydrates. And that might be true. And there might be many, many carnivores who've been on this diet for many years without consuming high vitamin C organ meats. But then they'll go and say, oh, well, I'm hitting my, I'm getting more iron and B12 than a vegan. It's very hypocritical. Same with Rhonda Patrick saying, oh, well, 
you might not hit this RDA on carnivore, but then she goes to say, oh, well, I don't listen to the RDA for DHA because there is no established value for DHA in the RDAs. Very, very hypocritical. People tend to use them when they work and then ignore them when they don't. But at the end of the day, it's what we spoke about earlier. They're just preventing deficiencies. It has nothing to do with optimal nutrition. I mean, I should have ended it there to be honest, but let's continue. So uh, the grain-fed diet being more nutrient dense than the standard American diet, you will take that away from this video, interestingly enough. And then we'll go into nutrients that are commonly worried about on the carnivore diet. But first, my masterpiece is comparing beef to liver, all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the elements, and then I have the other B vitamins here. And then I have the German and the US RDAs. The reason I have the German RDA is because Germany has this excellent website, nachwertrechner.de, that has like nutrient profiles that a lot of the United States databases don't test for. Uh, so the German RDAs are actually 1.5 to 2 times most of the US RDAs. So they are very similar and we can make very easy comparisons. But before we go into this, uh, we have the estimated average requirement, which is over here on the left for, uh, well, for US is on the left, Germany's on the right at the end over here, the estimated average requirement. And some of them are the same for both. And then we have one milligram is a thousand micrograms. And that's important because we have both of these units here. I mean, it's not terribly important because we're using percentages. And then one microgram is 0 0.025 IU. And that's important to understand the vitamin D3 IU. So first we'll start with vitamin A. Uh, beef having about 2% and liver having 2400% uh, of your vitamin A. So there is a big retinoic acid difference and in my video, why nutrients are important, retinoic acid vitamin A is pretty much the main focus as it's an important precursor to gene expression and cell differentiation which creates literally every cell in the body and decides which cells your body creates. Very, very important nutrient and that's that percentage of the German RDA which is like 1.5 times the US RDA. So this would be like like 3,500 percent of the US RDA. Uh, B12, liver is about 15 times higher in vitamin than B12 than muscle meat, but either way you're hitting the B12 RDA for Germany uh, at 163 percent for beef and 2,000 percent for liver. Uh, Germany being 3 micrograms, US being 2 micrograms. Uh, vitamin C, they actually don't really test for vitamin C in muscle meat a lot, but high quality muscle meat especially does have some vitamin C in it. It does have antiscorbutic properties. So that's why there's a question mark instead of a zero. Liver is usually tested for vitamin C and it does contain pretty large amounts of vitamin C in comparison to other parts of the animal. In this case, 22% of the German RDA is about 40% of the US RDA. But again, people continue to say we don't really need vitamin C on the carnivore diet and there's many anecdotes of that. Vitamin D, I mean, we obtain it from the sun, but there are some carnivore foods like fish roe, fish liver, very high vitamin D3 foods that uh, some people in high, like higher latitudes, uh, nor more northern climates, would have needed to eat to get their vitamin D3 intake, particularly like arctic mammalian flesh, very fatty fish, uh, maybe caribou, just high quality ruminant pastured animal flesh, particularly wild, will have a considerable amount of vitamin D3, especially if it's fresh. But the main concern with vitamin D3 is that the RDA is way too low at 400 IU for the US and 800 IU for Germany when you could literally get dozens of thousands of IU sitting out in the sun for a couple hours in a bathing suit. It's literally one of the biggest problems we have right now is the D3 RDA being too low. And I mean, yeah, the vitamin A RDA is too low as well, but I have a very hard time convincing people that. I mean, people, there are a lot of people and doctors even recommending higher vitamin D3 supplementation up to 10,000 IU per day to fix deficiencies, but we don't really see the same thing for vitamin A yet. I'm sure we will see that in the future. Uh, vitamin E is a, not really in these two foods in particular, but vitamin E is mostly in other fatty carnivorous foods like brain tissue, which we will cover. It's very easy to get your vitamin E RDA on the carnivore diet, uh, vitamin E being an antioxidant. Uh, vitamin K. There is no established RDA for vitamin K, but uh, there is one in Germany. So liver is 130% of that and regular meat is 20% of that. Sodium. Uh, and again, vitamin K is very important for decalcification of the arteries, calcium metabolism. 
you know, two very important vitamins, D and K, and there's either no established value or it's way too low by parameters of what we can get in, in a normal, you know, in the sun, from food, sodium. Most people salt their food, but what's interesting is there's no established value for the U.S., and there is an upper limit of the U.S., but the upper limit in the U.S. is actually the recommended amount in Germany. Potassium, there is no estimated requirement, not established, in the United States, but there is 4,000 milligrams in Germany. If you look at this 8.8%, and you say, well, this is 100 grams of beef and 100 grams of liver. So if you ate two and a half pounds of beef, it would be roughly 10 times this. So you would actually hit your potassium RDA because beef has about 1,400 milligrams of potassium per pound. Uh, same with liver, but no one's going to eat 10 pounds of liver. Calcium, we went over this. Calcium RDA is way too high. Not actually necessary to get that amount in your diet. Magnesium, we touched on the bioavailability. If you get, you know, multiply this by 10, if you get 63% of your RDA of magnesium in meat, it's in a more bioavailable form than the plant version. Phosphorus, I mean, people don't really touch on phosphorus, but there's plenty of it on the carnivore diet. Sulfur, not really much to talk about on sulfur uh, from what I've seen in the RDAs. Uh, chloride, I mean, chloride is in salt. Salt is sodium chloride. Iron, I mean, no one's going to complain about an iron deficiency on the carnivore diet, but it is important to note that a lot of these other vitamins are important in the metabolism of iron. Uh, zinc, is similar in liver and muscle meat. Uh, but again, zinc isn't something that people would really talk about on the carnivore diet. Uh, I did forget to mention, for iron, the German RDA is actually double the U.S. RDA. So uh, just, you know, a 100 gram serving of liver would easily exceed your iron RDA in the United States. Copper, 466% uh, for liver and 6% for muscle meat. So liver is known for having a very high amount of copper. Uh, but the RDA for copper in Germany is double the United States. Pretty interesting. Uh, manganese, not established for the U.S. There is a value for Germany. Uh, liver has some manganese in it. And fluoride, I don't think anyone's going out seeking fluoride in their food or water for that matter. There's an interesting Wikipedia article on what countries fluoridate their water. And then iodide. Uh, liver does contain a small amount of iodide, but it's usually obtained by indigenous cultures from seafood or dairy. So, you know, we kind of loosely went over this, all the RDAs, and it's pretty safe to say that you can easily hit pretty much every single RDA, uh, and then if you literally threw a couple eggs in here, you would hit your vitamin A as well as your vitamin E RDA. So there's no real concern about hitting any RDAs on the carnivore diet. Uh, one other little thing I wrote up was uh, a B vitamin comparison uh, between steak and liver, showing that B1 thiamine is three times higher in liver, B2 riboflavin is 20 times higher, B3 niacin is four times higher, uh, B5 pantothenic acid is 25 times higher, B6 pyridoxine is five times higher, B7 biotin is 30 times higher, and B9 folate is over, well, 70 times higher about. And we have to keep in mind, guys, the amount of nutrients in this food can vary from three to 10 times in regards to vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K, certain fatty acids because grass-fed versus grain-fed greatly determines the quality and the amount of nutrients in the fat of the animal. So, you know, this might be 1.7% of your vitamin A RDA, but the highest quality piece of beef might be 10%. Who knows? Uh, the easy way is to just actually get foods that are known for having a high vitamin A content as opposed to just trying to get the highest quality of everything. In regards to nutrients we might be concerned about, vitamin C can be obtained from spleen and liver. One 100 gram serving is going to be 40% plus of your RDA. Row or brain tissue for vitamin E is going to be 80% plus of your RDA. Eggs also have about 20% of your RDA per egg yolk, so you have half a dozen eggs for breakfast. You have way more than your vitamin E RDA. Uh, vitamin K2, although that's not something people usually worry about on the carnivore diet, it is very high in liver, it is very high in eggs. And uh, dairy and seafood are kind of overarching. If you eat the whole fish, if you drink dairy, they are complete nutrient profiles. In the case of eating a whole animal, like nose to tail, that's what you have to do to get a complete nutrient profile from a ruminant animal. In the milk of an animal, the mother is giving nutrients for the calf that it needs to survive. So dairy in itself is nutritionally complete. Uh, and fish itself is nutritionally complete if you eat the organs and the eggs. And it's a lot easier to eat 
those animals entirely than it is obviously to eat a whole cow. That's why foods like fish eggs are nutritionally complete because it's literally a little miniature fish. Uh, imagine if you could shrink down a cow and eat it in one bite, you'd get a complete nutrient profile. That's kind of what you have to achieve here and what you have to keep in mind uh, unless you actually know the specific nutrient contents of what foods and what nutrients you're trying to achieve. I think I'm going to do an entire separate video uh, comparing several different types of foods like maybe we'll do fish roe, we'll do egg yolks, I don't know. Let me know if you guys would like to see that. And we'll also do a video comparing the plant form of the vitamin to the animal form of the vitamin to kind of go over the bioavailability as best as I can. And then we'll also touch on anti-nutrients and anti-nutrients are uh, not really that big of a deal, but uh, there's just so much information on them that I don't really even know if I could cover them properly. Uh, for Dr. Rana Patrick here, I did put good sources of DHA. Uh, fish roe is 1800 milligrams, brain tissue is 700 milligrams, and eggs are 112 milligrams. So you don't want to eat some fish roe, just go eat a dozen eggs. Uh, one funny thing, roe in German is Rogan. So I was like, I gotta make a Joe Rogan joke about getting on the podcast, right? Uh, I thought I had to. So, uh, I think I kind of went over everything I wanted to in this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I will link the videos that I made in regards to why nutrients are important. Uh, I'll link the one, the Greek God video on vitamin D3. I'll link the video where I tasted all the parts of the animal. And honestly guys, almost all my videos touch on these vitamins to some degree. But, it's very safe to say that even with, you know, just eating only beef, you're going to get close to, if not hit all the RDAs. And in addition to that, you know, standard American diet, not going to come close really to any of these. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support me, please just share the channel. Uh, if you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to diet, exercise, sun, or water, uh, check out my website or shoot me an email. My email is in the description below. I do have quite a few products on Amazon that I use in my daily life that you guys might be interested in. And uh, maybe, hey, maybe you just want to reach out to me and find out how I do my makeup.